Hi, it's me, your friendly neighborhood alien stranded here on the third rock from the sun. Hi, Kairu Star. And today, September 19th, is technically my second anniversary as a VTuber with my past life. But I'm still counting it. So I thought I'd try something a little different today. Return to my horror host roots, have some fun. I thought, you know what? Let's start showing a chapter of a serial before every stream, or at the beginning of every stream, actually. So that's what I'm going to do today. I am going to show a movie serial from way back when, generally science fiction or horror. And today, I got something that's more in the science fiction variety, but it stars a legendary horror actor. It's called The Whispering Shadow. It stars Bella Lugosi at the height of his career. And, uh, well, this is the most money he ever made from a film role. About $10,000. I mean, you know, okay, that's not much now, but well, adjusted for inflation, that's nearly 230000 Not comparable to, like, the modern actors, but still, that's pretty darn good. It went into production on December 1st, 1932 by Mascot Pictures, a small studio that produced movie serials and B-movie westerns, and was released in January of 1933. Yeah, the turnaround time was really, really quick on these. The cinematographer, who I forgot to write down, attempted to duplicate, to mimic, the style of Carl Freund, who was the cinematographer of Dracula, the movie that made Bela Lugosi famous. It, it has 12 chapters total with a 225-minute total runtime, according to Wikipedia, so, you know, take that with a little grain of salt. But I do hope you enjoy Chapter 1 of The Whispering Shadow, which begins now. It's going to be a very quiet movie, I guess. Herman Munster? Oh, and Clark Kent? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, Doctor Strange is in this movie? Oh, Strange. This is Station UA of Berlin, Germany. Empire Transport and Storage Company of Berlin. Calling Empire Transport and Storage I thought there was a mascot Company picture, not an RKO of picture. Los Angeles, California. Is that thing going on my truck? Yep. Then you can get another driver. I'm through. Say, what's the matter with you, Merc? We've had four of our trucks wrecked in the past month, haven't we? And every one carried one of them hoodoo statues. Well, this is a fine time to lose your nerve. I can't help it. And I've got a strong hunch the whispering shadow is going to strike again. I'll take the truck out, Jack. What do you say? I'm not afraid. I'll brown nose you all you want. Makes a lot of difference when it's your kid brother, don't it, boss? Let me sniff your farts for you, sir. Well, I, uh... Thanks, I'll lick the Jack. bottom of your shoe. 
Oh, wait a minute, bud. Just want to make sure your radio phone was working okay. The radios were working on their mother trucks, but that didn't help the drivers any. Oh, cut out the crepe hanging, will you? If anything happens to that kid, Jack, remember, I tried to warn you. Again, broadcasting. Hello, Spark. Get my kid brother. Gotta pick up a shipment of clear water. I can't call him right now. There's something wrong with the radio. Who are you talking to? Uh, Mr. Foster. He wanted to. Ah, here you go again. Laughing everything that happens in this department. Here, I'll fix it. You clean up this mess. What's the trouble, Steinbeck? What's the matter with the radio? How soon are you going to have it fixed? I don't know. My equipment is all right. There seems to be some outside force interfering. Outside force? The same thing happens every time there's an attack on one of our trucks. That means the whispering shadow is going to strike again. And my brother is on that truck. <laughs> Everything's going to happen. See? There's a guy on a motorcycle. That happened. Hey, another guy. That happened. Don't shoot it, Jack. Oh, I thought it was coming Ryder. Gee, Jack, you sure gave us a scare. What's wrong? Nothing, I hope. But we're playing safe. Change the route to next turn off at What's that? Stay well. Who knows what evil Which lurks in the hearts shadow. of men? The shadow knows. It's a trap. Get going, bud. Fools, you cannot escape. Step on it, bud. You know, that is very unsafe. Do not climb on the windshield of a moving vehicle. Not safe. Also, don't do that. Do not fire guns from the roof of a moving truck. Also, very unsafe. This has been an important safety message. Grab 
the truck before she goes off the road. Jack Foss. He's one of the Whispering Shadows men. They attacked another of our trucks and killed my brother. I, I can't hear you. you, you you're whispering. Is. Tell us. Who is he? I don't know, I tell you. I never saw him. None of us knows who he is. I'm clean or we'll sweat it out of you. You know who it is, all right. Who is he? What's his real name? Come on, quit stalling. Speak up. Kruger is weakening. Watch his light and reward. I told you the truth before. None of us has ever seen me. None of us knows who he is. You're headed for the chair, Kruger. Lying won't save you. It's the truth, I tell you. All I know is where we need to get our orders. Where is it? Come on. Tell us. I'll tell. Get. Kruger talked too much. His light has gone out. Well, the chief's coming up and Robert Raymond's with him. You mean the famous criminologist? Yeah, passing through town and dropped off to see the chief. Okay, which How one of you boys happen? shot him? Well, we were quizzing this bird, and all of a sudden he dropped dead. It was no shot from the outside? Not a sound. May I, um, certainly, Raymond. Glad to have your opinion. Look. Strange. Thing's still hot. It looks like one of the electrodes that they use in the death house. That's exactly what it is. Your man was electrocuted. Electrocuted? Impossible. Well, where are the wires? The diabolical genius that conceived this had no need of wires. That man was killed by a radio death ray. You say your radio has been put out of commission every time one of these attacks occurred. How does your operator explain that, Mr. Bradley? Well, Mr. Steinbeck is in charge of the radio room. I'll let him answer your question. There's some strange influence cutting across our terminal 
that prevents us from broadcasting. Well, I beg to differ with you. I was in the radio business before I became vice president of this company. And I believe this so-called outside influence is an inside job. What do you mean by that, Jerome? Possibly Mr. Jerome is right. On more than one occasion, I caught him secretly fooling with the radio. Is this true, Jerome? Well, yes. As I told you, I know something about radio. And I have tested the equipment now and then. Has it ever occurred to you, Mr. Bradley, that the attack of the Whispering Shadow began about the time Mr. Jerome bought into this company? Mr. Bradley, I'll not remain here to be insulted by a subordinate whom I have reason to suspect. If you've anything to say to me, I'll be in my office. He's the Whispering Shadow. He looks evil. Is there anything else, Mr. Bradley? I don't think we need to detain Mr. Steinbeck any longer. Can you think of any reason why these attacks should be directed against your company, Mr. Bradley? None. No competitor who would like to see you driven out of business? We are unique in the field. Your losses must be considerable. It's not our losses that worry me. It's fear. It's our profit. For our employees. It's getting so I dread to hear the sound of a truck pulling out. I know its driver may never come back. If I only had some clue, however slight, to start unraveling. There's one strange thing in connection with the attacks. Every truck that's been wrecked was carrying a waxwork from Strang's house of mystery. Strang? You don't mean Professor Anton Strang, the magician? Why, yes. Do you know him? Only by reputation, and that's bad enough. I can try some means of paying him a visit. But that's yeah. easily arranged, and he'll never suspect you. Or you could just go, hi, I'm here to talk to you about stuff. Take your hat, sir. No, thanks. Where's Professor Strang? Take your hat, sir. Pretty lifelike, isn't it? Take your hat, sir. You're standing in the spring that operates it. There's the man himself, Bella Lugosi. We'd better watch our step around here. Can I help you? This is the most lifelike one of all. The professor sure knows his girlish figures. <laughs> oh, I, I beg your pardon, miss. You wish to see my father? I take care of the gentleman, Bira. Professor Strang, we're from the Empire Transport Company. I'm Jack Foster, and this is Mr. Stevens, our insurance adjuster. Yes? Your last shipment was badly damaged in a wreck, Professor. We'd like to settle with you. I have a similar figure in the storeroom. If you'll come with me, we can discuss the damages. Thank you. Uh, I'll uh, stay here while you two talk business. <laughs> By all means. This By all means, flirt with my daughter.
these little playmates of yours get kind of rough, Professor. My dear Mr. Foster, I can't tell you how sorry I am. I hope you're not badly hurt. Oh. What's happened to you? Father, a nasty wound you there. You better take you to a doctor right away. Oh, I'm all right. It's only a little bruise. You can't afford to take any chances. Let me call a taxi. We have a car outside. The company will mail you a check for the damages to your waxwork. What's the idea? I was just on the point of finding out something. You wouldn't have found out a thing. It was Strang who struck you down. Lucky he didn't kill you. Then we're on the right track. I wish you hadn't done it, Father. I'm afraid that assurance of justice suspects you. I know it does. Look at this. Doesn't know I took it out of his pocket. Mr. Robert Raymond, the world famous detective. Do you suppose this whispering shadow is wise to our secret? What's the difference if the shadow or this wise dick does find us there? Either way, you and me are rotting in jail for nothing. Maybe they won't find it. We hit it pretty smart. I ain't taking any chances. We've got to get out of here. Why, you're crazy. Them guys never miss. We risked our necks to get the stuff, didn't we? Well, I'll risk mine again to keep it. Not me. Bring it in, boys. Be careful with it. Hello, Professor. We have no further use for this after settling with you, so I thought you'd like to have it. Put it down right there. Thank you very much. Don't mention it. I'm glad to have been of service to you. Good afternoon, Miss Strang. How do you do? There's only one reason why he would take such a risk. I must take equally desperate action. What are you going to do? I strike at the warehouse tonight. But, Father, this is a terrible risk. You must be careful. Nonsense. It's any risk too great. The price is the world's richest collection of jewels. Father, please listen to me. going to attack the warehouse tonight. We'll be waiting for him, and we'll capture the Whispering Shadow. You all understand my order? We understand. Remember, they will be on the lookout for us. The place will be well guarded. Nothing must go amiss. I will be there. Stop! 
stop. We are. Well, what's the meaning of this? That's all right, Bill. Let him pass. Sorry, Mr. Jerome, but the place is being guarded. We weren't expecting you tonight. Do I have to get special permission to enter my own office? I've got work to do tonight. I've never known him to before. Check in at Portland for transshipment. Okay, 34, that is all. Colon truck 42. Colon truck 42. <laughs> I thought I told you not to interrupt me. What is that same interference? The whisper shadow. Shall I call Mr. Raymond? No use alarming anybody until we are sure. Sounds to me like trouble with the aerial. Get up on the roof and take a look at it. Yes, sir. And don't go locking yourself out on the roof again. And don't fall off the building again. Everything's working as planned. The door's open. You give me that package. What are you going to do? Keep shoot a vampire? Me, shoot. You hear me? Oh, Mr. Raymond! Mr. Raymond! 
We just found a marksman inside a friend of Ace. Whispering shadows. Sound the alarm. Stay tuned for Chapter 2 next stream.